Acne truly can disrupt every aspect of your life. And acne may seem like a small situation to a lot of people, but for the person dealing with it on a, on a daily basis, it's a huge problem. Finding the right answers for your acne truly can change every single thing that you experience. So in this video, you're going to learn about the most common underlying cause for acne. You're going to learn how acne originates from the inside out. So any product or cream that you're using topically for acne would be like turning on the water hose and then trying to push the water back up the hose with a leaf blower. That's, that's not going to work so great, right? So in this video, instead of using a leaf blower, you're going to learn how to simply turn off the garden hose. That's, that, that's a better option. So do not go anywhere. Life altering information is on the way. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. The foundation to understanding acne is to understand that the skin can basically be considered a detoxification organ. We basically sweat all the time, and we sweat in such small amounts that as soon as it hits the air, it evaporates and, and we don't even know we're sweating. But when we're sweating, we're removing toxins in that sweat that goes out of the body through the pores. Now, the skin is not the main exit strategy for toxins in the body. It's, it's more like a secondary pathway or maybe even an emergency backup situation. But if the main detoxification pathways are not working correctly, the body will call on the skin to move more and more toxins out of the body through the pores. Now, if your skin becomes the main detoxification pathway for the body, there's going to be some problems. Acne and skin issues are usually what show up. When these toxins start to clog up or, or inflame our pores, the acne makes perfect sense. And, and this trouble starts a lot deeper than your $69 facial cleanser is going to reach down and, and get at. So a lot of times these products just aren't effective. Go down to the comments section right now and let me know what you've used to try to improve your acne and if anything has brought you any type of relief. Most people know that the liver is in charge of filtering out toxins in the body. Now, the kidneys can help out a little bit too, but the liver is the captain of the detoxification ship. What most people don't know is that the liver puts much of these toxins into our bile so that it can be removed from the body. So to understand detoxification, we really need to understand digestion. So here's how it works. The liver filters toxins out of the body and puts them into this bile. And then it sends the bile down to the gallbladder where it can be stored and concentrated. Once our food is properly acidified in the stomach, it will leave the stomach in this acidic state and go into the duodenum, which is the first 10 inches of the small intestine. Now, once this acidic product is in the duodenum, this is when the body drops the bile from the gallbladder down onto this acidic product. Now, bile is very alkaline. So when alkaline meets this acid product, it creates a sizzle. And this sizzle is what helps us really break this food apart and really pull all the nutrients out of that food. So now remember, this bile is mixed with the food and it continues to move through the intestinal tract to help us pull all the nutrients and assimilate all those nutrients in the food that we ate. And most of it eventually goes out the back door when we poop with all the toxins that the liver filtered out of the body and put into the bile. So as long as bile is flowing correctly, the trash gets taken out and the skin can remain a secondary player in the detoxification game. Here's a problem. There's a wide variety of issues in the industrialized world that can cause the bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. This is so common that we probably see in about 60% of our clients that these folks need help getting their bile thin so that it will flow properly. When the bile becomes too thick and sticky to flow properly, all those toxins that the liver filtered out and put into the bile don't get taken out the back door. They can be reabsorbed into the system and then they make the system a whole lot more toxic and the liver has to filter them out all over again. The liver's like, hey, I just did this. Why do I got to do this again? And eventually it gets overwhelmed and then the body needs to call on its backup systems to help with this detoxification process. Remember that the skin is one of our backup systems for this process. If the skin becomes a primary player in detoxification, that means too much junk is trying to get out of the body through the pores in the skin. That would be like trying to poop through your skin. Like you know for a fact that that's not going to go well. 
So when too much of this junk is trying to go out through the skin, it makes perfect sense that the pores would get inflamed or clogged and create a lot of skin or acne type issues. The pores were not designed for this level of responsibility when it comes to detoxification. So of course the lack of bile flow already makes perfect sense for acne, but I'm not even done yet. There's more. Bile has another crucial role that we haven't even talked about yet. Beyond taking all of the toxins that the liver filters out and removing them from the body, and beyond coming down and neutralizing the acids that leave the stomach so we get that sizzle and we can pull all the nutrients out of our food, beyond all that, bile is also like a soapy substance that helps us emulsify or break down our fats. So when these dietary fats that we consume can't be digested correctly, they become toxic and they become a burden that the body has to try to figure out how to get rid of. So when bile isn't flowing correctly, not only can toxins get pushed out through the pores in the skin, so can undigested toxic fats. So even if you eat a healthy fat, if it doesn't get broken down correctly, it can rot or ferment and just turn into this toxin and then the body's going to try to push these toxic fats out through the skin. So these toxic fats are really good at clogging up the pores and creating acne or, or cystic acne or other major types of skin issues. Now there's a lot of things that can thicken up the bile so that it won't flow correctly and like you know grains is a big one for a lot of people. Uh, processed foods can be really problematic and thicken up the bile and so can a low fat diet which was very popular back when we had parachute pants and a lot of people think is still the way to go today. When you're eating a really low fat diet you're not consuming a lot of dietary fat so the bile doesn't get called on a whole lot to help emulsify those fats and then it gets backed up and it becomes too thick and it doesn't move correctly. High estrogen levels can also be a problem. And there's a lot of medications today, you know, things like uh, birth control and a lot of other medications that can really raise the estrogen levels. And high estrogen seems to have the ability to thicken up that bile so it won't flow correctly. There's also an imbalance at the, at the cellular level called a catabolic imbalance that can thicken up our bile. And this imbalance is, is very common as well. We'll talk about some steps that you can take to thin your bile, but first let's look at some markers that can help you figure out if you might be having a problem with bile that's not flowing correctly. Just keep in mind that most people are not going to experience all of these markers. You may be dealing with only one of these markers and that can still be enough to consider that you might need to take some steps to get the bile thin so that it'll flow better. The first markers include a light colored stool, like if your stool is lighter than the color of corrugated cardboard, or a loose stool. Remember the bile helps to neutralize the acids that leave the stomach, so if a stool is too loose and fast, sometimes it's because bile isn't flowing well. And bile also makes our stool darker, so if your stool is sometimes lighter, that can be a strong sign that bile is not flowing correctly. Here's another big marker. It's acne. Yeah, acne is so common with poor bile flow that we actually use it as a marker to consider that, hey, maybe the person needs some help with their bile if they have acne or some type of skin issue. So it's a really big marker. Nausea can be a big marker, especially if you are just uncomfortable after eating a higher fat meal. Like if you seem to have trouble digesting fats, that can be a big marker. Also, if your saliva pH is 6.5 or lower, or we use some tin parameter urine dipstick sometimes. And if you show bilirubin or urobilinogen on that dipstick, those are strong signs that bile is not flowing correctly. So we have a free four week course where we teach people how to run these simple tests and look at these factors and figure out if they may, may need to put some effort into improving bile flow. And we'll put the link to that totally free course down at the bottom in the description. Now I'm going to give you some steps that you can take to work on thinning this bile so it'll flow better. But at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the link to our five ways to improve bile flow video. So be sure to watch that because we go into a little bit more depth there and you'll get some more insights when you watch that video. Also, if this is really shedding some light on your acne and you're finding this information very helpful, go down and click on the like and subscribe button right now because that tells YouTube to show this video to more people and you know what this is like to deal with this issue. So you want to help other people find their answers too. So click the like and subscribe button. 
Now, reducing the amount of grains or processed foods that you consume can be a big help, but let me start with the easiest step and one of the most effective. We like to see people use a product called Beet Flow from Empirical Labs. Now, we're not the manufacturers of this product, and this isn't a, a paid promotion video or anything like that. This is just what we have found to work well, and this is what we use with our clients. And the reason it works well is because Beet Flow contains a lot of concentrated beet greens juice. It's a concentrated form of that. So don't look for beets or think that if I eat beets, it's gonna thin my bile and, and don't get a cheap beetroot product. Beetroot doesn't really do anything. It needs to be the concentrated beet greens juice. So this helps to really thin the bile and get it flowing correctly. So this is always the first step that we wanna take and I'll put the link to where you can find that in the description below. The next step is uh, maybe you're not so fond of it, but coffee enemas and coffee suppositories can be really effective at opening up that biliary pathway and dilating it so the bile can flow a little bit better. Now, unfortunately, drinking coffee does not do the same thing. That's not gonna help. It's gotta go up the back door. So some people are a little bit more fond of the thought of a suppository over doing like a coffee enema. That can be a little more messy, a little more difficult. We'll put the link to those suppositories where you can find those below too. But the, not everybody needs this, but it can be a really effective uh, situation if you seem to have a stubborn case of bile that just won't get moving. Now another supplement that can be really helpful is choline, but only some people can use choline and you really need to know what you're doing if you're gonna use choline. So in that free four week digestion course that I'm putting the link to in the description, we teach people how to look at their unique bio individuality and figure out if choline is appropriate for them or not. If you use choline and you're not uh, someone who should be using it, you can create oxygen utilization issues and a whole lot of energy production problems and it's not something that you wanna do. But if it is right for your chemistry, it can fix a lot of things and it can help you thin your bile as well. The next step that can be really helpful is to bring high estrogen levels down. So if you have high estrogen or you're taking some kind of medication that's really raising estrogen, then you can talk to your doctor about finding a way to maybe use something different or to reduce that so your estrogen levels aren't so high because that seems to really, really have the effect of thickening up the bile so it won't flow correctly. Now, the final step is a kind of a doozy because increasing the amount of fat that you consume can help trigger the body to get the bile flowing again. The only problem is that if bile is not flowing, you're not going to be able to emulsify those dietary fats that you eat, which means that acne could get worse or you could get more nauseous. So I don't love this move, but as you start to thin bile using these other methods, if you start to increase the amount of fats that you're bringing in a little bit, that can move things along a little bit faster. Now, if bile's been backed up for a decade, it might be a little harder to get it moving. So for stubborn cases, we like to see people take that beet flow supplement and do what's called a beet flow flush. So at the end of this video and in the description below, I'm gonna give you a link to our how to do a beet flow flush video so you can do that. Because some people, if they do that you know, once a week for a few weeks, it'll really give it a boost and get things flowing a lot better. And we'll show you how to do all that in that video. So poor bile flow is not always the cause of everybody's acne, but for most people, it seems to at least be a contributing factor. So go down and sign up for the free course in the description and kind of look at your body chemistry, understand how to do that. This course will walk you through how to look at everything and then it'll walk you through the steps that you can take to get the bile thin so that it'll flow correctly. For now, you wanna watch our five ways to improve bile flow and our how to do a beet flow flush videos. So click on the pause button so that you can open these videos in a new tab and watch both of them. You're gonna to wanna to see them both. I can't wait to hear about your results.